Hello everybody, it is time to review Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Since Indy 5 has came out, I can't wait to see it. I'm going to see it with family, hopefully. But uh, today, let's talk about The Last Crusade. The second best Indiana Jones movie. It came out in 1989. And what can I say? It opens with a strong mood. Like, Indiana Jones, we see him younger. Like, I never really thought about much about the young Indiana Jones adventures. I always liked just Indy as an adult, but it's actually nice learning what he did before his archaeology days. Like, we're seeing him in 1912, like when the Titanic sank. But apparently, he's part of Boy Scouts, and he is looking through this cave with his friend, and they see what someone looks like in Indiana Jones, and they're looking for this cross thing. And Indy's like, it belongs in the museum. And he's played, this young Indiana Jones is played by River Phoenix. Rest in peace. He did a good job as young Indy. And basically what happens is uh, he gets into a goose chase with these goons. Like, they go on a horse. And then they go onto a train. And it's like, they're just running around all around the tracks. Like, Indy falls into a pile of snakes. It shows that he how he got his fear of snakes. He just falls into a bucket of them. Earlier in the movie, he did pick up a snake. He says, oh, it's just a snake. But now, snakes terrify him. That's his weakness. And so, uh, Indy does end up falling into a lion pit. And he, oh man, it must be terrifying. And he does get picked up by the, the goons. And they're like, we want that thing. And then Indy's like, it belongs in the museum. And then uh, he goes into a magic room after he escapes. And then um, he somehow he gets out of the train. And then the, the archaeologist is like, damn. And then uh, Indy finally runs home and he sees his father and his dog, Indiana. That's how he got his name, his nickname. He's been using it since he was a kid, basically. And so later... The the criminals do catch up to him. Well, I don't know if they're criminals. And they end up getting the cross. And then, for some reason, the guy from earlier gives Indy the hat. So we know how Indy got his hat. And then we flash forward to 1939. Indy's on a boat that's during a thunderstorm. And we see one of the gangsters, which we did see in the flashback, much older. And he's like, this is the second time he took my property. And Indy ends up uh, taking down the goons, and I think the entire ship explodes, and then Indy uses a life preserver to escape. And that's where we get into the actual movie. The plot is, Indy is looking for the cup of Christ, because the Nazis are looking for it, and also his dad went missing, Henry Jones, Jun- Henry Jones basically. Since we learned that Indy's actual name is Dr. Henry... Jones Jr. And so, uh, Indy goes on a quest with Marcus Brody. I don't think I talked about Marcus, but uh, I always like Marcus. He's like the awkward sidekick of Indy. I always like Sahala, though. Or, or Shuron. Like, those are Indy's best sidekicks, for sure. But as Indy travels after he discovers the Holy Grail and its secrets that can lead to his father, uh, he gets the help from, uh, this one guy. I don't know how to say his name, but, uh, He's played by the guy who who, who did who played a uh, uh, General Veers in Star Wars. So it's nice to see Star Wars actors in Indiana Jones. And he does tell Indy to don't trust anybody. And so Indy goes to I think uh I think Poland. I I probably got that wrong. And that's where we introduced to Elsa. So Elsa was the third love interest to Indiana Jones. But then it's revealed later in the movie that she is not so much of a love interest. And uh, she basically is going to help Indy find where the Holy Grail could be. They go into a library. We do get this funny scene where um, the guy is trying to stamp books. But then Indy's using this uh, thing to uh, open the secret passage. And I, did, I just love the part where they also try finding, like, various numbers to find the location of what they're looking for in the library. And Indy and 
Elsa do go through the sewer, and we get this gross scene with oh rats. I actually gagged when I saw that scene. Cause I'm just like, oh, I do not like rats. And but then Indy and Elsa do find the the tomb thing that for the location of the Holy Grail, and they take that information. But then they run into the bad guys, who are wearing these hats, and then. And then uh, they go into this big, cool boat chase. I always liked that scene. It was intense. But then Indy gets hold of one of the goons. And the guy's like, we're both going to die. You got to let me go. And then he reveals that he's, he's a good guy. He's, for some reason. Even though they did kidnap Marcus. And then, uh, yeah, I think later... Indy does finally meet up with his father after being somewhat romantically interested in Elsa. They go to uh this uh a place uh it looks like a honestly look like like a haunted house. And the best scene is where Indy pretends to be like a cur- like an angry painter or something he, like has like the f- hat on and Elsa's wearing the fedora. And it's it's funny. And then eventually Indy sneaks out of his little hotel room. And then he, that's where he finally finds his dad, uh, Henry Jones, played by Sean Connery. I'm just going to say, Sean Connery is amazing as a Henry Jones. Rest in peace. I know he died like two years ago. But dang, he was really good. He's a really good actor. Uh, he'll definitely be remembered for this movie and for his role as James Bond. Like, I love the chemistry between him and... And Indy, like, Indy is just kind of embarrassed of Henry because, like, he doesn't, he calls him Junior all the time. He ends up even knocking him with a base because he thought he was a criminal. He's just like, Junior, what you doing here? And then Indy and uh, Henry do find their way through the plot, try to get their way out. But Indy's like, I'm here to save you from the Nazis because he went missing. And then, uh, I think the Nazis, it is revealed later that they did find the Nazis. They are looking for the Holy Grail for evil stuff. And then one of the Nazis has Elsa hold hostage. But then uh, Indy is convinced, is trying to get convinced by uh, Henry that uh, that let Elsa don't they don't fall for her. And then it's revealed that Elsa is a spy, a Nazi spy. Who is after uh, Henry's uh, j- journal? Who leads to the Holy Grail? Uh, yeah, and uh, the best part is when Indy and Henry are uh, when they're tied up and left in this one room as the bad guys escape. Will leave, and then they try to get out through a match, but uh, when Henry tries to blow it. It just catches on fire and then like creates a huge fire in the scene and they're going through this switch door that's between the Nazi base and the room they're in. Like it's it's funny. And then uh, I think they do escape by taking down some of the guards and then they trick the guards into thinking they sped away on a boat but instead they use a motorcycle. And yeah, it's a, it's a pretty good thing. And I'll, they also get a good conversation where Indy and his dad are just like, hey, let's talk about your mom. It's a good father-son moment. Like, the father-son, like I said, moments is, like, really well done in this movie. Like you, like I said. And uh, I think later they go on to... They sneak on, to, on board to a Nazi uh, blimp. And the funniest part is where uh, Indy disguises himself as one of the attendants there. Well, and... I think one of the Nazi guards gets suspicious and he finds Henry because they're looking for him. But, uh, yeah, Indy ends up throwing out the guard and he's just like, uh, no ticket. (laughs) And then everyone starts pulling out their passports. And I think later in the movie, earlier, is where, uh, Indy and his father do go sneak into a, like, a sort of Nazi party where everyone's throwing books and fires, and we—I never noticed this in the movie, but I—I I know I'm not going. I'm going to be talking about something controversial. We see an infamous scene of Adolf Hitler himself in this movie. That's a little weird, in my opinion, since 
You know, that's the real life evil man. But, uh, he ends up signing, uh, the book, not even realizing it, and that's the journal for the Holy Grail. And I think Indy does find Elsa, and he, like, he's just all in. He just grabs her by the throat, and, and she's, she, I think they did take the journal. Wait, she did earlier, and that's how he gets it back. And that's where we do see the, the scene of the signing. I think later, after the, the party, I think next is like we get this cool scene where Indiana Jones has to fight a tank. I think I'm jumping in this movie a bit where uh, Marcus meets up with Sahala after I think he does find his way uh, through the city. Ah, sorry, I'm like trying to figure out the plot, like piece it together even though I did rewatch it yesterday and then uh, yeah, we do get Indiana Jones versus a tank. Like Indy is Going through a lot in this. Like, I almost thought he could have died. Like, he literally hangs onto the one of the tanks. Is like, cannons. And he's, like, getting crushed by, like, rocks. And he almost gets hit by one of the boulders. But he ends up climbing back onto the tank. And, uh, he almost falls to his death. And then, the, and then, I did like the scene where the guy, Indy puts a rock in one of the cannons and he ends up knocking out the guards and they think it's all a joke. But then as the tank fell, Indy and his fa- Indy's father and Sahala and Marcus are devastated because they thought Indy died. But I knew he wouldn't die. And Indy gets back up and he's just he just stares at the crushed rubble and then they turn around and they're like, Oh my god, I thought you lost you, boy. And then later, they finally find the location of the hidden tomb of the Last Crusade. And uh, that's where all the Nazis are hanging out. They're, and then they send one of their goons to uh, infiltrate it. They'll go look for the Holy Grail. And he ends up getting his head chopped off. Like, it's disturbing. Like, Indiana Jones gets away with violent scenes. Like, in Temple of Doom... And like Raiders, we get like scenes where people are getting spiked through the head, like like it's crazy. And then eventually the Nazis do see what they're up to, and then what happens is it's intense. It's for it it was revealed that the guy from earlier who told Indy not to trust anybody, he's revealed to be a Nazi too. And he's looking for the Holy Grail. And what he does to get what he wants is he ends up shooting Henry. To get Indy to go find the Holy Grail in the to- in the cave. And Indy's like so worried. Like we get this scene where Indy does go into the cave. And he's like speaking the words of Jesus. And while and there, we're getting scenes between Henry as he's bleeding out. And uh, I just love how Indy survives the saws. And he has to step on these letter things. So he won't fall into. into it's, it's a trap basically. And one of the most scenes I thought would never we never see in Indiana Jones movie is where Indy ends up what well, looks like he's about to fall down a deep cliff that leads to the Holy Grail, but instead it's revealed to be an invisible bridge, and he like hesitant at first. He's breathing heavily, and then he steps on it, and then uh, he walks towards it, and then it's revealed that the the Last Crusade. Is a knight who's protecting the Holy Grail. He's been there for centuries. And he's just sitting there old. And he kind of wants peace. And he ends up attacking Indy. But he realizes he's he's one of the good guys. And then Elsa and the guy. Uh, I'm sorry I don't know his name still. Um, they walk through the, the caves themselves. Since Indy finished off the traps. And they end up uh, having to choose a bunch of cups of which is the Holy Grail. And he picks the wrong choice. He picks the wrong cup because Elsa picked it out for him. He drinks the holy water and then uh, he dies. And uh, and we get this horrific scene where like he turns into a skeleton and he's gone. And then the knight's like, he chose poorly. Like that's a good line. And then uh, Indy has to choose wisely. And then he finds something as simple as a small cup. And then 
that's what he chose wisely. He does find the Holy Grail. And then, uh, yeah, he gives it to his father and heals his wounds. And, yeah. But then, uh, El- what Elsa causes is, uh, um, she, she's so glad she finally found the Holy Grail. And instead, she grabs it. And she ends up stepping on this, uh, thing that causes, uh, the temple to fall apart. And she ends up f- almost falling into the pit of unknown but Indy catches her but then it's revealed uh because her she's wearing a glove and Indy's like honey I can't hold you and then he acts she accidentally lets go and then she falls to her death and I assume Elsa's dead like it's such a weird way she died the love interest dies like that because she was so desperate for the holy grail because you probably think Elsa was the bad guy but she honestly was she her greed took over and even shows in Indy when he almost falls down in a cliff too. And but Indy's father saves him and he doesn't call him Junior, he calls him Indiana. Like that's a good scene. And he decides to give up the Holy Grail and just let it sit there. And then uh he saves him and then our heroes get out of the cave. And the best scene, probably my favorite scene in all the Indiana Jones movies, is where they uh they decide to all head home. And they get on horses, and they're, and Indy's like, I got fond memories of the dog. And then it, it was because there's real that Indy's got his name from a dog, his pet dog. And then our Marcus leads the way out of the cave, and they all, all our heroes run off into the sunset. And that's Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, a really good Indiana Jones movie. I don't think I really had any issues with it. Like, I like how they went to, with its old roots. Like, from the first movie. Like, it felt like the first movie. Temple of Doom felt like a completely different movie. And, yeah. I can't wait to see The Dial of Destiny. If you've seen it, tell me about it in the comments if you want to. Uh, I'm going to be talking about an infamous Indiana Jones movie. That being... If you know what it is, the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. I, I look forward to talk about that movie. I'll give you my thoughts on it. So, uh, anyway, thanks for watching. See you guys next time. And I give this movie a 10 out of 10.